So we see kinesio tape or K tape being used all over the world, particularly in a sporting environment. But does it actually work? Let's find out. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Visio. So we know that taping, or perhaps the use of athletic tape in particular, has been around for ages. And in the past, it was commonly used to help with stability. So it would be placed around someone's ankle to prevent ankle sprains, or around someone's shoulder to prevent shoulder dislocations. But then, at the 2008 Olympics, K-Tape burst onto the scene. Companies donated 50,000 rolls of K-Tape to 58 different countries. What happened? The athletes wore the K-tape and the rest of the world thought they should too. And suddenly K-tape was born. Pretty impressive marketing actually. Well, the idea behind K-tape is that it's designed to be more elastic than the original athletic tape. And it's said to have more of a role in improving flexibility or enhancing performance or reducing pain. But does it actually do that? Well, I dived into the evidence in this review and make sure to stick around to the end so you can get my personal opinion on whether it should be used still in practice. So the first paper I have to show you is from that of Pereira et al in 2014. And their systematic review is titled Current evidence does not support the use of kinesio taping in clinical practice. Bit of a giveaway. So these authors analysed 12 different randomised control trials involving 495 different patients. And crucially, they looked at different parts of the body that had been researched with the use of K-tape. The lower back, the neck, the shoulder, the knee, etc. And also, they reviewed the use of K-tape against no intervention against other different physiotherapy interventions, and also against sham taping. That's right, the use of K-tape, but perhaps in not very specifically clinically reasoned areas, maybe just somewhere around the area, rather than a very specific point that should be used. So overall, their results was that K-taping was no better than sham taping or other active comparison groups. They also made the point that in any studies that K-taping was seen to be better, either the effect size was too small or the quality of the study was not good enough to suggest that it really had an effect. But do bear in mind one thing. They mentioned that K-taping was not more effective than sham taping. But I think another way that we can phrase that is that sham taping was as good as K-taping. Keep that in mind for later. Then I wanted to bring up another study that looked at the use of K-tape against general MSK conditions. This was the systematic review from Mustafa Vifar, Wurtz and Borchers from 2012. Effectively, they found similar things to Pereira et al. However, there was one particular line in their conclusion that I did want to highlight, and that was, this systematic review found insufficient evidence to support the use of K-tape following musculoskeletal injury, although a perceived benefit cannot be discounted. Once again, keep that in mind. Okay. So for general musculoskeletal conditions in a normal population, it doesn't seem like K-tape is that effective. But we do see K-tape being used all the time in the sporting world, on the hamstrings, on the hip adductors, on the paraspinals, or on the calf, for example. So I decided to dive into the sporting world a bit more. Does it actually improve performance? Does it actually reduce pain? Does it actually lead to better recovery post-injury? Well, all these questions were answered by Renica et al. in their 2018 review, Effectiveness of Kinesiology Tape on Sports Performance Abilities in Athletes. Just what I needed. So the researchers focused on studies that included healthy individuals, that included randomization, that included the use of K-tape against no taping or sham taping, but not against other interventions like stretching or strengthening. And therefore, they measured the effects of K-tape on athletes when performing different functional tests. Things like ball skills, things like vertical and horizontal jump, things like sprinting, and things like long distance running. And... Well, effectively, the results were similar to the other studies we've looked at, that they found no compelling evidence to suggest that K-tape could really enhance sports performance in these athletes. Again, it's a shame, but it's true. So one final paper to review and a very quick shout out before I get into my own personal conclusions. And that was a study by Jarecki et al. in 2021. They looked at patients using K-tape following total knee replacements. And they looked at the effects of K-tape at day three and day eight for patients who did and did not use K-tape. And they looked at the results and the effects of K-tape on pain, range of movement, and post-operative swelling. 
Now, they didn't find any major differences for pain and range of movement between the two groups, but they did find that the K-tape did have a significant improvement in the swelling for patients who did use K-tape rather than who didn't use K-tape between day three and day eight. So that's something of interest and perhaps points the fact that we should look into more swelling-based improvements for future studies looking at K-tape. So, my conclusions. Ultimately, it doesn't seem like there's compelling evidence to suggest that K-tape should be used either in the musculoskeletal environment or in the sporting environment. But there was a common theme between some of those studies. Pereira et al. highlighted that effectively sham taping was as good as real taping. And Mustafa Var and Wirtz and Borchers from 2012 highlighted that a perceived benefit of K-taping can't be discounted. And maybe that's just it. Why do players of all sports keep using it? No doubt their medical teams are fully aware of the evidence that we've reviewed. But sporting athletes like having a routine. They are very superstitious. And perhaps it is that psychological effect of K-tape that was mentioned in some of those studies that seems to be having the effect. Perhaps, as we hear about with a lot of physiotherapy modalities, K-taping has a neuromodulation effect, the ability to provide some kind of sensory feedback from the tape being on the skin, sending it up to the brain. And perhaps that makes athletes feel more comfortable and perhaps that's why they keep wearing it. So whilst the evidence highlights that K-tape doesn't really have an effect, the evidence also highlights that it doesn't necessarily cause any harm. And if athletes just like having it on, then perhaps they should be allowed to just wear it as they choose. We can't really get away from the it feels good argument. So the only reasons I can think of as to why we shouldn't be allowed to use K-tape is similar to what we said in our acupuncture review. Link for that in the description below if you want to see it. And the idea there is that we don't want therapists being untrustworthy or having a lack of integrity and thus charging their patients lots and lots of money to continuously apply K-tape. Also, we have to consider the possibility that athletes get dependent on K-tape in their psychology and feel they really need the K-tape for their performance. What if for some reason they're not allowed to use K-tape in a match? Is that going to reduce the effectiveness of their performance? And so if we can keep those two things in mind, mitigate against it and not over inflate the benefits of K-tape, then maybe it's okay. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and follow us on social media, such as our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and check out our website, clinicalphysio.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Khalid. We'll see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.